Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone that's put this thing together and has invited us to be a, a part of this program. We sure appreciate that. Uh, we hope that all the hard work that we've done over the years uh, will pay off for more people as time goes on. And uh, I guess we could start your slideshow. I think you have to manually run it, um, but that we have the website and direct contact number if anybody needs to get a hold of me at some point. Maybe there's a question <laughs> I might have later down the road, I'll be available. Uh, also in our presentation, we have a gentleman by the name Michael Bettencourt. He's on there. I think we have Dean Hunt from Humboldt County. Are you on there, Dean? I don't know if Dean got on or not, but then we have Sam Laney out of Texas. Uh, he is a user of the Southwest uh, Fence and Supply Suspension Fence. Uh, liked it so much, he became a, a bona fide uh, fence erector and has a, a distributorship for Southwest Fence and Supply uh, Systems of Texas and Oklahoma. So appreciate you guys being on there. I guess um, one of the places we could start with is basically our our fence system uh, that the pictured as a suspension fence. It has a, a all driven brace. Uh, the the posts are like thirty foot apart. That's at Alpine, Texas. That particular uh, photo, and we're able to span our our post out. Uh, you know, saving uh, the cost of posts and labor, and gives the fence more uh, flexibility. If we can go to the next slide. All right, getting back to the, the brace system, all driven brace system, no welding required, no concrete. Um, it could be flown in with helicopters, packed in by hand. It's a, the H braces is, is basically a five piece uh, set. It comes as a kit, all prefab. And uh, that particular ones at Cal Poly uh, and it has a, a horse mesh put on it. But the idea of that particular picture or photo is that's a hot dip uh, galvanized version for like along the coast. We could hit the next one. Uh, this is at our manufacturing plant out of Joplin, Missouri. That's just showing some of the raw material before it gets painted or hot dip galvanized. And um, we can move on to the next one. Uh, that's a brace that's complete, packaged, painted, ready to set it up, put it in the ground. And I think we can go with the next one. That should be a video right there. Yeah, it should be a video how showing how it works. Off. Yeah. Just take a second and we'll watch that. All right, thank you for showing that video. Uh, basically that, that shows that H brace being put up in less than 15 minutes. Uh, no concrete, uh, that's in that real hard caliche soil out in uh, Cape Creek, Arizona. So that was just kind of a illustration of the whole thing's driven. It's a 12 foot span, uh, comes in three sizes of post. The, the regular H is a two and seven eighths then we go up to the two uh, three and a half inch posts uh, and the gate posts are four and a half inch for hanging swing uh, swing gates on it um, I think we can move on to the next one I know a lot of people need to talk I think we're back to Alpine Texas along the railroad suspension fence a little better close up uh, what we're looking at here is the um, the curly connectors it's like a pigtail that we've developed that goes on the goes on the post uh, there at the fab shop and you just drive the whole thing in and I think there'll be a little video of how to how it works uh, rather than wrapping wire double wrapping wire around a post so we can move on to the next one just another shot of it next 
Okay, this illustrates our suspension fence, 30 on center. Uh, this is out in California. And they had somebody dumped a bunch of stuff off and it got pushed around uh, and by a semi, I think, that backed into it. And there again, it was a six wire fence that the wires weren't broken. Uh, it, you know, bent the T post and, you know, sort of distorted the, the super stay. It's made out of a high density polyethylene. But we see this quite often uh, along the, especially the county roads up in the Bay Area where there are a lot of commuter, commuter trails, I call them, and constantly getting traffic through them. And um, anyway, our suspension fences seem to hold up really well with that versus the, uh, the common 10 foot on center or conventional fence. Um, so I guess kind of shows that it, you know, once that, once that piece of concrete is moved, that fence will go right back into place. And I know for a fact that that was the case. We had to replace the one T post that was bent. Um, and how I know that is one of our uh, specialized uh, fence crews went, went over and repaired that for the customer. So I think we can go to the next one. Uh, this is up at uh, Humboldt County. Uh, this illustrates uh, the, the uh, 20 foot on center suspension fence. Uh, pretty tough terrain, as you see uh, over where it breaks over the over the hill. That's pretty much straight off, and not much access for equipment at all. Um, you know, we talk about you know what constitutes a conventional fence versus a suspension fence, and how 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 far apart do you put the post in whichever case? That depends a lot on the terrain. This particular ranch property. It's pretty steep, and if it's on the same plane, you could probably get by with 30 on center. But however, this one, you can see the dead men uh, that are placed uh, in the low, the low spots. And then you can see uh, where it breaks over the hill, there's a three and a half inch, uh, well, it looks like a three and a half inch stress post with the curly connectors on it. So we're able to span that thing out a little bit. Um, and there again, the, I think the, the customer that did that was supposed to be online with us and to talk about it um, as hunt ranches. So I think we can move on to the next one. Chris, Dean is here with us if you want him to say anything while you're on the slide. What was that? Dean, Dean is here. Dean is online right now. Oh, he is on. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. And did you want me to say something at this point? Sure. Well, I, I just, I, this project was an NRCS project at our mountain ranch in Bridgeville. Uh, we went through and put all new interior fences on. We have a big problem with, with elk and stuff. So we, we tried to design a fence that would be wildlife friendly. And as you can see on this fence, it's, it's four wires, three bob wires on the top and one double uh, twisted smooth wire on the bottom. Um, since we put that in, we, we have at times, we'll have a couple hundred elk on our ranch and traveling different to different ranches and everything. I have not seen anywhere where we've had a problem with the fence. They, that 42 inches high is good because they seem to go over that and not, not bother it. We tried to keep the, the bottom wire 16 to 18 inches off we're able to control our cattle whenever we want to. I just, I think it's a really good fence system. And I've been involved in the, I was involved in the fencing business with New Zealand style fences back in the eighties and was looking for other alternatives for this and felt that this was a really good alternative that Chris had come up with. That it's just a nice, good fence system. And it's been in a couple of years. And about the only thing is, is it's not tree proof, but as far as keeping the cattle where they want to be and staying up, it's been a really good fence. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Dean. Okay, let's go to the next photo. Okay, this is on the same ranch that, um, that uh, Dean Hunt is talking about. This is actually his ranch and uh, family ranch. But you can see where this fence uh, is going through, you know, heavily, uh, a lot of conifers and oaks and of course, some of that 
looks like fern forest, uh, you know, it grows up over the fences and, and it, it works really well in that, uh, that environment as well. So uh, any questions on that one? And Michael, um, any of you guys want to, you know, add something to this, you know, feel free. So we can uh, move on to the next one. This is the conventional way that we were used to put the, the wires on a, a pipe post. And they, they, they do have a, an issue of sliding up and down at times, especially if the wires get hit with livestock or if people crawl over it, they get a little bit of slack in them and then they wind up sliding up and down the, the post. So I think the next one should uh, show the new system. And there should be a video on that one you can hit. I'll check. All in a half a minute, a half, half a second's work. And it doesn't slide. They, this fence is over 30 years old. Uh, it's out um, Contra Costa County. And that's the original extruded uh, black polyethylene stays in which these days come with a lifetime guarantee, even if they get into a fire um, and, they, and they get damaged, we replace them at no cost. So this particular fence was done with T-posts that was long before we had our own uh, post system. So we can go on to the next. Uh, this is one that's um, down in Arizona. That's probably where you guys saw that uh, machine driving the brace. Um, using the wood uh, cedar post out of Texas, alternating with T-post and the super stays. Just a real neat looking fence. And the area that it was put in, it was mostly for the aesthetics of it. But at the same time, it you know still holds cattle and you know keeps the, keeps the cows out of Cave Creek, Arizona, Scottsdale. So we can move on. Uh, this one basically is showing the difference in the stays. Uh, there's been a number of stays done in, uh, over the years. This um, one on the right is the twist wire stay. They, um, they don't have much visibility for livestock and wildlife. And once they bend, they stay bent. They don't, they're not resilient. So it just kind of shows the, the visual part of that um, of that product. I think we're good for the next one. This is more of a close up that shows where the the lock wire goes down behind in that V. And um, anyway, that's also showing the four point um, stay tough 14 gauge wire that we exclusively use now. And um, I think that was down in Texas. Uh, in fact, the gentleman um, that's on with us, his name is uh, Sam Laney with Diamond 4L. And Sam, you might want to talk a little bit about, you know, how you uh, became introduced to the product line and, and where you are with it now. Everybody hear me okay? Everybody hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Sam Laney from uh, Texas, great state of Texas here. I was uh, initially a customer of Southwest Fence, and we had some bucking bulls down here. Um, I was having all sorts of problems with these bulls, keeping them in and keeping them contained. So, uh, you know how the bulls are, they, they'll either go through the fence or over the fence. But they'll get in a fight and start pushing against the fence, tear it up. I think I went through, gosh, at least two conventional fences using Evo, six strand barbed wire. Then I went to field fence with two strand barbed wire on top, even electric wire to keep them off of it, still tore it up. I think I went with two fences, probably 18 months, two different top fences. I was constantly repairing the fences, uh, rounding up bulls. Of course, they'd get out on neighboring ranches and then they would, you know, I always hated those calls of your bulls over here on my cows. So that was a lot of fun. Um, luckily, I met Chris on a trail ride out California, and of course, we started talking about fencing and uh, told him about my dilemma I was having, and uh, 
I got a system that that would contain them, and uh, it's a suspension event. Of course, I was a little skeptical. I said, "Well, you want to send a crew down? Send them down. I'd love to try it." So he did. Uh, sent a crew down, and I was uh, very impressed how quick it went up compared to conventional T post fins um, with the welded H braces, second concrete, and corner post, second concrete. And usually, invariably, those top fences fell here in Texas because of these expensive type uh, clay soils we have. So those H braces are start leaning, and corner posts start leaning, and the T posts start pushing over. So it's just not a very good system. Um, the fence Chris and his crew put up, it worked flawlessly. Uh, still looks like it's brand new. Uh, I just saw it yesterday. Uh, it's been up probably two years. Uh, so I was so impressed by the inst installation and the, you know, the final product. I convinced Chris to let me have a license here for Texas and Oklahoma and uh, become a distributor and start installing it here. So hopefully I can, you know, solve some of the Texas and Oklahoma people's problems like I was having with this fence. I think it's a great system um, and it's aesthetically very pleasing looking fence compared just to the team post brand fence. Um, that's, it's just a great system, so. You for the next one? Thank you, Sam. This should be. Okay, this is gonna show the installation of the super stay. That's in Florida. Good job. Okay. Yeah, that's another one down in Texas. Um, there again, 30 on center. There was a question that popped up a little bit ago and it was regarding the legal fence. I just like to try to address these things as we go through it. I wasn't even noticing these things were coming up and our office manager sitting next to me here. She says, hey, there's people can, you know, can ask questions. So I'd like to address that. That is something that I spoke with uh, Sheila and Teresa about the other day and we've actually had a, um, a lot of discussion about how that may could be changed for the state of California. You look at uh, Texas, Oklahoma, and other states, they, they use a lot of suspension fence, even along the interstates. Um, we've had Contra Costa Water. They have a lot of highway fence. They've used it by, by their own choice. Uh, we've had lots of customers that are basically government uh, entities that have chosen to use it um, with the new style wire, the new uh, type stays, the visibility, the flexibility. Um, it's, it's proven to be uh, significantly better and a lot less maintenance. Um, and then, of course, we had another question here. Well, it needs to be addressed. Uh, that, that would be a good one. We talked about that the other day. Um, however, we had a customer that, that had an issue with a neighbor at one point, and some livestock got out on the wrong side or something, and then the, the question was, uh, I think it was a pack of dogs that got in there and, and ran them through the fence. And it wasn't going to make any difference if the posts were three feet apart they were gonna go through it. So the judge uh, in that particular uh, matter uh, seemed to lean toward the customer that put in this new style suspension fence. So there, there, there should be some things changed like some of the other states have done. And like I say, with this newer uh, visible, visible fence and you know, you're know you going with you know the just the newer, better materials than we've ever had. Um, but anyway, hopefully that answers that that question for you guys. Uh, next one on uh, how deep the braces go. 
minimum four foot, five foot for gates. Uh, sometimes if it's real heavy a soil, adobe uh, will go six, sometimes, you know, six, seven foot deep, depends on where it's at. Uh, there's another question here from Susan. Hi there, Susan. Um, the cost of it. We figured that um, like on a conventional fence compared to our suspension fence, and we have one of our customers on the other line to verify it, it was slightly less going with those two and seven eighths post. I think it was a seven wire fence that he put up out in that Dixon country, irrigated. So it was a little bit less. The materials are, are a little bit higher on the, on the um, material side than a T post. Obviously you have a post that is gonna cost you, you know, 20 bucks versus a T post. It's gonna be about six or so now. Uh, however, if you can span it out and the time savings makes up the difference. Um, so basically if you figured a suspension fence probably going to be somewhere around, you know, using the conventional T post with alternating curly connector posts, you're probably looking at, you know, 30 to 40% savings, uh, especially on the labor side. So hopefully that'll answer that question. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can go on next one. Okay, is there another photo? <clears throat> this is in a in a grass uh, grassland feedlot, it's down in southwest Missouri, and they tried the suspension fence, had really great success with it, and that's that particular fence is 20 on center, and um, they it's a very high pressure situation, lots of cattle loaded up, you know, in that uh, those 10 acre lots, and of course they feed commodities, but after doing that. That first, um, that first fence using those poly stays and that suspension, they've literally done every project on all the ranches that they own and buy with that system. And that's, uh, that's Jackie Moore Livestock out of uh, okay. Mount Vernon, Joplin, Missouri. In like fact, they have the Joplin reg Regional Stockyard. So they, uh, they put these fences to the test. I think we can go with the next one. This is a suspension fence going across, it's just continuation of a fence going across a, a little uh, uh, wet weather uh, creek. And um, it's showing a, a kind of a flop up type um, water gap that swings off a cable. And in fact, that's, that's at one of our, our personal ranches uh, there in Southwest Missouri. And I think we can go on the next one. Uh, this just shows the, uh, the different heights of braces that we manufacture. Uh, we can make these braces that go eight, nine, whatever, whatever height is required. And we put them in a double type um, form, especially for like that eight foot deer fence it has a lot of, a lot of strain on it. And it would actually pull a single H brace. So it just, we're just kind of showing the different variable uh, variations of our brace, I should say. So that particular fence is down south of King City, between King City and Paso Robles. It's uh, Bradley, California. And I think we're down to, back to the beginning, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, we, do we still have Michael online? Yeah, I'm still on, Chris. Okay, Michael, I think it might be your turn and I, we can take some uh, questions and whatever needs to happen, I think that we probably want to get on to the next guest. But if you have anything you'd like to add to this, I'm sure appreciate it. We still have five minutes. No, I, I, yeah, and no, I would like to say something, Chris. Um, I'm a third generation rancher and well, I've known you since mid to late eighties. And I've been around your fences since then. And we have some of our fences that you put in in the late 80s. And the H brace is basically the same as what they are today. There's a couple small little changes, but the same idea is still in that brace. And those braces are still working flawlessly. And 
the fences are working good. Um, and I run cattle in the Bay Area Hills. I have irrigated ground in Dixon, which is a real heavy clay ground. And I have some irrigated ground in Modesto, which is a lot sandier ground. So it's I have three different types of soils. And the fences work excellent in all, all three applications. And on the suspension fence, being that was pretty that was new to me and i was old school to where you put your posts every eight to ten feet and every 10 pickets you put a put a a, a post um so the suspension fence was something something new and something different but we've always had excellent luck with the southwest fence and you never steered us wrong so we tried that in Dixon, and that's really hard ground to do that fence in. It's like I said, that clay really has no bottom. And we went, I think we went 30 on center with those. That's a seven wire fence and no pickets. It's all the curly Q posts. Been in service five or six years and no problems at all. And when we spec that fence, that fence was actually cheaper than going with the pickets and, the, and six wires. So added an extra wire and made a better fence and saved a few dollars. So, and I do have that fence in a couple applications down in the Bay Area Hills. It's been working great. And I definitely wouldn't have a problem to put it in about anywhere. That's been, been real good. And it's uh, cattle get to, bulls get to fight and they're pushing around or whatever. That fence has a little bit of give and they're, might not go through it like, or, or lay the, the pickets over like a conventional type fence. So real happy with it. Okay. We have two minutes, almost, almost three minutes left. Okay, I really don't have a lot to add to it. There's uh, some questions. Um, how, how do the fences hold up going through the um, stock ponds? Um, I'm guessing that is referring to corrosion. Um, probably gonna be about as good as the galvanize is. If you have the hot dip galvanized, it's obviously gonna last longer than something that's uncoated or even painted. Um, yeah, that's that's always a tough one, you know, running anything through a, you know, through through water that that sits there all year round. Um, but you know, it, eventually it'll it would probably rust away. I think there's another question. Um, what about the stock pond one? Yeah, got that one. What about the lava rock? Uh, lava rocks, yes, um, no problem. We've done miles and miles of it. Um, up there out of uh, Chico, up on that table rock country. And we just use a, a regular draw, rock drill and you just drill the hole just the size of the post. You don't have to go as deep if it's solid lava, uh, like we've done a lot of it in Hawaii. And you only need to put the post in, you know, just six to eight inches because it's solid. So yeah, that that's how we address that. And then, uh... Can the curly connector post be pounded in or do they have to be set? Uh, pounding the post is uh, the, the preferable way to, to, to uh, install these fences that we design. Uh, we're not big fans of concrete. Um, even the environmental type people we deal with, um, they really don't like the concrete, you know, because of the chemicals in it. Uh, this brace system has the uh, struts that you saw drive out through it. So that really helps the thing, you know, hold it, hold it in place. Uh, the thing we've noticed, um, like where you get a lot of freezing and thawing and even that real heavy adobe, concrete's not the end all. You end up with, um, you know, upheaval, especially, especially in, you know, places like in the Midwest and, um, you know, it seems to be the concrete seems to rise up. And um, anyway, what else?